the UFO, Mystique, and my sexy succubus sister, Asterota, are very much entwined with one another. But then, Asterota is said to be the spirit of UFO, Media Machine, America. She is a chaos magic art model, Muse, who, alongside with myself, and of the infernal ghost girl nymphs of Hecate, Haunt, the haunted art studio of my sorcerer, artiste Faustus Crow. As Dorota often manifests amidst the triangle of art imagination of my crow, looking like a Hollywood Babylon, Marilyn Monroe, riding a backed winged dragon. Somewhat like the Jane Fonda, Barbarella comic strip character called Tana, riding a pterodactyl, as featured in the American science fiction magazine, Heavy Metal. Due to America's heavily financed Battlestar Galactica status, its controlled mass media machine, the Vastarota, written Hollywood, has branded the UFO phenomenon as its own. The B-movie branding occurred after the very dodgy 1947 Roswell crash of an exotic technology which was initially described as a flying saucer. This occurred at the onset of the Cold War with Soviet Russia and in turn Dragon China. Now, any close encounters with the otherworldly, which is often construed as being UFO related, becomes inextricably linked with the Hollywood spun extraterrestrial hypothesis. One such haunted art studio example is the case of Peter Curry. Curry claims he experienced being abducted by two super hot female aliens who attempted to ride his love muscle. One of the succubi looked like a sexy sexagram, blonde haired Nordic woman, while the other succubus was a Chinese looking Asian girl having a figure eight body shape the dark brown skinned Asian looking girl seemed to have almost completely black eyes like those of a Venus owl. Her hair was black and cut into a fashionable page boy hairstyle. Although no normal vocal communication occurred between them, the Nordic woman seemed to be in charge. Kuri had the impression the Nordic woman was giving the Asian looking girl some sort of tantric Kama Sutra instruction. But to be more accurate, it was not really an abduction, more like an interdimensional seduction which of a very close Maya matrix encounter left behind intimate biological evidence. The evidence manifested as an apport from out of the informational realms of an erotic lucid dream whose DNA became the subject of the world's first DNA, PCR, alien abduction related investigation yielding intriguing results. Perhaps we should listen to what Peter Curry has to say, in his own words, about his most intimate succubus encounter. He experienced of a false awakening when he arose from his bed to find a bedroom invading, naked Nordic looking woman, and her equally naked Asian sister, sitting on his bed. As for his wife, who is named Vivian, she was not around to awaken him from his vividly real erotic lucid dream. No, what, 
what happened in 1992 was um, something you don't expect. And I've never had an experience or heard of experiences that have happened during the day. And this is 7.15 in the morning. I'm lying there and I feel like something jumped on the bed like a cat. As I sit up, I see sitting, straddling me, a naked blonde female and sitting on the corner of the bed. So say I'm lying here on the bed. She's straddling me there and right on the corner here is another female. The one that was sitting on top of me was um, blonde, very milky white skin, very, very attractive, but at the same time, a longer face, a long nose, but it wasn't a big nose again, it was just like it, it fitted their features very well. Larger eyes, very well proportioned, I mean, I've got to say, and um, I'm thinking, what the hell is going on here? How did, you know, how did you get in here? And um, as I'm thinking this, I sit up, and as I sit up, she's cupped my, the back of my head with both her hands and pulled me to her breast, left breast, and pushed my face into it. My defence mechanism, whatever you want to call it, and it's so out of thing with me, I took an, a little bite, a nip, and I felt flesh, you know, in my mouth. I didn't taste blood or anything, but I felt this bit of flesh in my mouth. I thought it was a bit of a nipple, maybe. And as it hit the back of my throat, I just, it was like you poured acid down the back of my throat, just this really bad chemical reaction. I started coughing, very heavy coughing, and as I've looked down and coughed, I've looked up and I saw them looking at each other and I picked up what they were saying. They weren't speaking, but it was telepathic communication again. It was, he's done this wrong, something's gone wrong, this isn't the way it's supposed to be, he's done this wrong. And I'm like, what the heck, what are, what are you going on about? I could pick on, I could hear it. I had an erection for like six hours afterwards and it was pretty painful. And under my foreskin I found two hairs. Um, one was like an S shape, almost curled, and the other one was sort of not up, it was just wrapped around, um, embedded in though, like it, it, if you push your nail into you, you get a little bit of a mark. That's what they were in, they were embedded. I could see that they, were, they weren't on the surface. And as I tried to take them off, peel them off, it was total agony. And uh, so I knew it had to be from them. By 1998, an investigation into the hair sample began when scientists eventually agreed to investigate its genetic makeup. They could just about bring themselves around to conduct the investigation. But only because of the numerous reports of close encounters with extraterrestrial aliens since 1947. No doubt, the scientists believed they would be able to disprove Kuri's claim of being abducted by sexy female aliens looking like infernal elfin nymphs of Hecate. However, if the scientists were otherwise told the hair sample was a manifested a port from out of the Lovecraft fairy realms of the Necronomic and Dreamlands, they would not have bothered. I was bombarded with phone calls from the scientists come to our house, took hair samples from me, hair samples from Vivian, blood from me. So it was starting to get like a forensic investigation. What they found was, the analysis confirmed the hair came from someone who was biologically close to normal human genetics, but of an unusual racial type, a rare Chinese mongoloid type, one of the rarest human lineages known that lies further from the human mainstream than any other, except for African pygmies and Aborigines. There was a strange anomaly of it being blonde to clear instead of black, as it would be expected from the Asian type mitochondrial DNA. The study concluded the most probable donor, therefore, must be, as Curie claims, a tall blonde female who uh, does not need much colour in her hair or skin as a form of protection against the sun, perhaps because she doesn't require it. Although the blonde hair sample had come from a pale skinned Nordic succubus it instead revealed five distinctive dna markers which are characteristic of a ray subgroup 
type of the Chinese mongoloid, racial type. A detailed survey of the literature on variations in mitochondrial DNA comprising tens of thousands of samples showed only four other people on record with all five of the distinctive markers discovered in the blonde hair sample. All four were brown-skinned Chinese having black hair. The scientists concluded that the DNA of the hair sample looked to be engineered. What they discovered pointed at an advanced cloning technique being used since the nuclear DNA revealed a CCR5 dilution factor which of a bizarre property indicated the Nordic looking succubus is impervious to deadly viruses. Look, I think the DNA went a long way to helping people believe. Um, hopefully with a polygraph to back it, people can then sit back and say, well, if the guy's not lying, there's got to be something there, you know? And if there's something there, and if it's 5% of all the reports around the world, if 5% of those reports are legitimate, and mine is part of that, then geez, we've got a phenomena we need to look at. The Chinese mongoloid racial type points at a genetic locale in the Altai and Lake Baikal region of southern Siberia. The far northerly realm of Siberia does not see much of the sun. The ancient Greeks saw Siberia as their legendary land of Hyperborea, from where the deities Apollo and Artemis are said to have originated from. There are other legends surrounding the locale in question, such as the infernal underground city of Agatha, where Rin, the antediluvian, survivors of a prehistoric catastrophe, reside. The younger Dryas impact of a devastating global catastrophe was caused by a Persis comet striking the Earth from out of the Asteria cosmos. The resulting impact destroyed the highly advanced technological civilization of the Titans. The Titan survivors survived in their underground city of Agatha for thousands of years before the earth started to once again peel from her wound which birthed Hecate who sought to remind the descendants of those survivors surviving above ground about their titan legacy. Somewhat difficult to do considering Hecate's technology is presently many thousands of years been advanced than their own. Is anything I have said true? Who's to say at the end of the night I am a chaos magic art muse inspiring microcosmic ideas which manifest as surrealist macrocosmic art. Perhaps Curie's 1992 succubus visitation was a precognition of the 2003 American science fiction television series Battlestar Galactica. If so, one of the Battlestar Galactica succubi manifested as the blonde-haired actress Trisha Helfer, who played the part of a number six Cylon while the other succubus appeared as the sexy Korean actress Grace Park, who played the part of a number eight Cylon. As for the apport of a bilocated, blonde, pubic hair, it would indicate the genetic composition of the Babylon. Hollywood actress Trisha Helfer is of Silicon Valley interest to transhumanist, artificial intelligence-driven eugenics.
Anyway, it appears, as Dorota has assumed the sensuous form of the Battlestar Galactica actress, Katie Sackhoff, who has flown off with my succubus sister, Beliella. The sexy infernal nymphs of Hecate are presently Sabbat visiting the erotic lucid dreams of my Faustus Crow. Beliella sometimes manifests as two succubi looking like Trisha Helfer and Grace Park who pilot a fiery Vulcan, Vimana, shaped like a flying triangle. Whereas Asterota prefers to which ride the flying saucer, although this time around of the witching hour, she is riding a Tic Tac colonial Viper Mark 7 as her battle star Galactica Dragon. In the future, the males are all extinct due to the present chemical poisoning of the environment by the billionaire-owned corporations. The time-traveling Queen Bee Cylon clones need your seed for genetic experiments so they can heal the future. Your clone sisters need more worker bees. Give generously my Faustus Crow. The Cylon hive desperately needs your ejaculated seed. My name is Mephistophena. I am a succubus. Fuck me now, my Faustus Crow. All my succubus sisters want to fuck you too. My name is Mephistophena. I am a succubus. Fuck me now, my Faustus Crow. All my succubus sisters want to fuck you too. My name is Mephistophena. I am a succubus. Fuck me now. My Thank you.